Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint an acrylic landscape painting and uh, what inspired this was two things. For one, you guys, I asked you about doing an acrylic painting or actually I asked you guys about doing a landscape with lupins in it and the other inspiration is that I was asked to run the art room for uh, local high school's project graduation so, and I have a hard time saying no if it's something to do with kids even though they're high schoolers. They're not really kids or graduating high school but still they're kids to me. They're, you know, they're less than half my age so yeah, they're kids. Um, and so the um, the teachers had thought that like a main themed painting would be good and they told me they have canvases and, and acrylic paints for the students to use so I thought I would just work something up that was really simple that they could do as well and then I figured I would record it so that you guys could um, uh, could learn too. And this video is brought to you by jerrysartorama.com. I am using some of the Turner Acro Gouache. It's my favorite acrylic paint. Um, I'm also using some Soho for it to fill in some colors because I've used up a lot of my Turner Acro Gouache but they have a set that's got quite a few colors. I think it's like 18 colors and it comes in a case with brushes and a palette and the palette is the case lit. It's just really handy and it's like about 25 bucks. So if you wanted to try it out, I like it because the paint doesn't look like plastic when it dries. It's very, well, it looks like a gouache. It's matte and beautiful. And uh, I also find that working with it is pretty easy. So um, I don't know where this canvas, <laughs> what brand this canvas is, to be honest. Um, it was part of a, uh, a bulk pack so I did spray my canvas with water because sometimes I found when I get um, canvases of unknown origins because I don't buy canvas very often because I don't do acrylics or oils as often as watercolor um, I find that sometimes that the paint will drag and you could reprime your canvas if you want to regesso it but I'm kind of lazy so what I do is I just give it a spray with water and then my paint will glide nice and easily so I'm using sky blue from the Turner gouache line mixed with white and I have it stronger at the top than the bottom so I'm just kind of adding some white as I go and I'm going to bring this down below where I want my sky to be. Now because I added the water it kind of made my paint a little streaky so I am trying to uh, trying to even it out. I'm going to even it out even it out with some more white and just work it back and forth to smooth it out. I have no idea what sort of quality supplies are going to be awaiting me during this this art room tonight, but um, but we will make do, I am sure. And then I'm just gonna I'm just smoothing out my strokes like that. Okay, so now I want to do some clouds. So I'm gonna grab a filbert. I'm just gonna set that in my water and hopefully not remember not not remember not forget to. Uh, <laughs> to clean that later and I'm just going to pick up some white just on the tip of my filbert and I'm just going to tap and by tapping and pushing I'm able to get nice puffy clouds that are lighter at the top and then just kind of fade into my sky. Generally your clouds are going to be much um, much brighter and whiter at the top and then they're going to fade. Now you can wipe your brush off on a paper towel or a rag and then um, which you probably want to so you'll end up with nice bright paint and I try not to wet my brush after just doing that that original um, layer because I don't want to lift up that paint underneath because I am going wet into wet here and I'm just gonna drag out the bottom and I just want to let you know that if you hear any like a uh, noise upstairs um, the kids are home and uh, it's gonna be summer pretty soon so you'll be used to hearing the noise upstairs <laughs> all the time and I'm just gonna layer up some clouds here you can have as much or as little as you want and also if you you know want brighter white clouds you can go in later when it's dry and add some clouds in there I like to do maybe some wispy ones as I work down because generally your clouds are um, smaller as you get closer to the horizon because things closer to the horizon are farther away from you. Just some wispy clouds. A nice bright day here. I think I might let that one go right off the top of the page actually. There we go. Build some nice, uh, some nice perspective when we do that and I can always go over uh, and, and brighten that up later if I want to. So the next thing I am going to do is sketch on a, um, a water line. I think I'm going to have a little pond here because when I was picking lupins the other day I was at the edge of a little pond and I thought that would be kind of be kind of nice to have. I'm going to start, I'm just going to go pick up some of this um, 
some of the sky blue because the watercolor would be reflected in the sky. And I'm going to try to put my horizon line about um, a third of the way down. And I usually start a little bit lower than where I want it to end up in case I need to um, straighten it out, like if I've gotten a little crooked because I am not working at an easel when I film a tutorial, I, I am working flat. So um, sometimes I have to tip it up and adjust it. Uh, if you're working on an easel, it's a little bit easier to tell whether you've got it crooked or not. Or even if you just have a few, you know, old books on your table that you can prop up your your painting on. So see, I like to kind of squish it, scooch it up as I go. And I'm just going to, you know what, I have this actually taped to my craft mat so it doesn't slide around. So I'll just look at my monitor. It looks like it's maybe tipping down a little on this side. I think that's pretty good. And then I'm just going to grab some more of that and maybe, well, I think that color's all right. I don't think I need to pull in another color. That's a pretty good sky blue. kind of looks like cerulean, so if you're not using the, um, the Turner Aqua Gouache, go for a cerulean. I think you're going to be real close with that color. And I'm just going to fade it, fade it off. So there isn't anything like, sometimes some acrylics can be transparent. I know a lot of people think, well, acrylics are opaque because they dry and you layer over them, but that's not necessary, necessarily true. It just depends on the color and what pigments they used. It could be transparent. So I like to kind of feather it out that way. Um, you're not going to see any weird, you know, hard edges. It's a calm day, so I can leave it just like that. Now, I think um, I will put some kind of land over here. I'm not going to clean my brush. I'm just going to pick up some sap green. The little the little palette uh, paper I'm using is a little cute little Jane Davenport uh, palette. I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt sienna on, on that, a little bit of lemon yellow. Um, you could add yellow ochre, but I didn't have it out, and I'm not sure if I have any of that left because that's one of my favorite colors, so that one goes quick. <laughs> and honestly, I wasn't quite sure what my uh, what my situation and colors was. So I'm going to add this in there, kind of on the edge. And I think I'm going to bring some around in here. So we've got this pond, but we've got some, uh, we got some land coming in around here. And we're just going to bring that I will just bring it right over, actually. Yeah, let's bring that right in like that. Remember, we can always layer stuff on later if we want to. And I think I have a little mountain over here. So I'm going to think on that for a second just to make sure that's what I want to put there. I'm going to go in with some more sap green and lemon yellow, bring this up. And just kind of get in um, a little bit of a base coat here. Now you can kind of see how my paint's dragging on my canvas. So what I can do is I can, I'm just going to dip my brush rather than spray and then end up, because I don't want to have any water spots up there. I'm just wetting my brush so I can spread that a little bit better. But if you ever get that situation where you've got a, you know, a canvas and your your paint doesn't want to flow and you know you have enough paint on there, sometimes just wetting, just spritzing your canvas lightly with a fine mist of water will be all you need. Let's bring this over here. Now, this is a little more vibrant than what I want, and I know I'm going to be layering in some lupins, so I want to get some darker, darker colors in there. I'm going to grab some, some uh, ultramarine blue and just throw it in with that. Um, that sap green. I'm going to grab some cerulean as well. And I'm going to get some kind of darker passages. Just kind of slip slop it down. Don't, you know, don't, uh, don't worry about it. Just get some. And also we can kind of pull in this interesting um, composition where we have your eye kind of going like a Z through the painting. So that's another reason I want to play with the shadows here and get something happening. I should have taped my palette down too. That wants to roam on me. 
I'm not going to worry about the side of the painting, um, but I usually do paint that, like carry the paint right around th to the edge so that I get that as well. All right, so now I do think I want some sort of mountain over there. I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt sienna, and I'm going to mix it in with my blues here, the sky blue. Throw a little ultramarine in there. A little more ultramarine. Basically, I'm making a neutral. I don't like to use black. Uh, I know a lot of acrylic painters use black, but it, because I'm a primarily a watercolor painter, uh, I just don't tend to use black. Um, and I think I'm going to pull in a little bit of like maybe a little mountain area over here. And that will also fix any issues I might have with my horizon not being perfect. Throw that stony, uh, stony color in there. I'm just playing with the height, seeing what I what I end up wanting really. Maybe it's Mount Katahdin. Baxter State Park. Maybe this is part of Moosehead Lake. I don't know. I bet there's lupins up there. There we go. And then let's add a little green to that. Um, I'm going to grab another brush or something a little smaller. And I am going to grab some of my mixed green here. And I am just going to throw some of that on there. Maybe with a little brown, the burnt sienna that just looks a little too green. We've got to temper it a little bit because we don't want this to compete with the green in the front of the painting. We just want the idea of, okay, we've got some granite cliffs there. We've got they're brought here from the glaciers a long time ago. It's so amazing when you think of how everything got where it did on our planet. You know how things shifted and moved? What crazy, crazy uh, climate stuff happened. Man, mind boggling. Okay, this is an art class, not a, uh, <laughs> and I'm no ge geology teacher. Uh, so I'm just going to add a little uh, dioxazine violet because I know, I know I'm going to use that in the lupin. So any color I know I'm going to use, I try to integrate here in the background. I'm adding some of this to the bottom. Give it a little bit of weight and shadow. And I can also put it in any shadow areas on my mountain. Once you get it mixed in, it's gonna get muddy, but that's all right because it's going to give you, uh, it's gonna give everything this kind of local color. I'm gonna darken up this here with some of that dioxazine violet purple mix. A little cove going on here now. Okay, so I've got one layer on the canvas. I'm going to let this dry, and then when we come back, we are going to put another layer, and I really don't think this painting is going to take a lot of time. So we'll see you in a minute. The background has dried. Now I'm going to go back in with a smaller filbert brush, which is this round tipped one, and add some highlights onto some of these clouds. I just want to do this on the top of the clouds so it brings out the shape and gives them a little bit of highlight. But I don't I don't want to do it everywhere. I just I want to keep some of that blue sky kind of showing through. This is just going to brighten things up. And I can actually do it fairly dry brushy so that um, I'm not going to be leaving behind big gobs of paint. I'm just kind of Tapping it, getting some shape in there, making them look a little more interesting. And I'll kind of work it into the bottom of the clouds too. I'll like put a little puff, like a cotton ball, and then I will just keep, keep kind of scrumbling around until I've wiped most of the brush off my paint. Or uh, most of the paint off my brush, rather. <laughs> and uh, I can throw in some little tiny wispies far away here as well. There, I think that gives it a lot of depth and it really makes the sky look nice and pretty. So another thing I can do with that white paint on a small brush, um, and I'm just going to keep using this filbert, and I'm just going to load it by stroking it through the paint like that, um, so it kind of pulls those bristles together, is I'm just going to give it a little bit of sliver. I could probably go with a smaller brush, actually. Just give it a little bit of a sliver of highlight there. I'm going to switch to a different brush. That was That's a little too wide. So let me just go with a smaller flat. Let me wet it so that I can get those bristles to stick together. Let's do the same thing over here. 
I got into some green. Oh my, second, second part of this painting is not going as smoothly as the first. Let's try that again. And you don't want it to be everywhere, just kind of want to like hit or hit and miss a little bit. And that will just give you that um, feeling of the light reflecting. And you can do it a little bit um, in the middle of the water too, if you want the appearance of um, a little bit of a ripple. And if you have some ripple and movement in the water, then you don't have to really fuss too much re with reflections. A sunny day like this, uh, the way the light's positioned, you wouldn't necessarily have reflections in the water anyway, so that can just give you a little bit of a, of a sparkle. Just try to keep those um, lines level with the horizon. Hopefully I've done that. It's hard to tell with it lying flat, but I'm going to go with it. So the uh, the main part of this picture, and this is one of these paintings that I need to guide people through in about an hour. They have an hour's worth of time to be able to do this, will be the flowers. Now I was trying to make my own triangle brush the other day with little, uh, with little success, but what I did end up making was a really nice foliage brush. So I'm going to take some ultramarine blue and I'm going to take a little bit of magenta here and I'm going to use this weird looking chopped up brush that I made. So if you have an old round brush you don't really care about too much, you can just kind of uh, kind of give it a cut on an angle and you can make this this charming little foliage brush. It wasn't what I was going for, but it will work just fine for this. So it's great for making those little um, those little lupin flowers. I do some add a little white to my brush. So these are smaller because they're further away, so I want to tap these on first. And I'm just twisting my brush to get different uh, different edges. I don't know what makes the, I, I think it's the seeds that make the different colors, unlike like, flowers like hydrangeas where the acidity in the soil make the different colors, because you'll see them together in a field and there'll be all sorts of different colors present together, like, you know, you'll have a purple one right next to it, a pink one, so I think it's just whatever the kind of seeds it got spread. And somebody mentioned that it's illegal where they live to pick wildflowers, but luckily that is not the case here in Maine. <laughs> We're kind of like New Hampshire and the whole live free or die uh, mentality. <laughs> and I'm grabbing a little pink right in my puddle of white. I can always get more white later if I need to. Do some pinks on here. And then as I want bigger ones, as I work forward, I am going to press my brush more. Okay? I'm not going for realism here. In fact, if you just wanted a quick and easy painting to do with some friends, like you want to do a little paint party at home, go ahead and use this. Absolutely have fun with it. I'll do some light ones over here. The tips of them tend to be um, very, very pale, almost like a light green, but I don't think that would really show um, this far away. So I'm not going to even attempt or bother, I should say, to do any light green there because you're not going to make out really fine details too far away. I can always go in and tap some in later if I feel like it, they look too flat. And do some more with some blue in them. I, I want to make sure I don't have any white canvas poking through too. And now I think I'm going to switch to a bigger brush. I am going to go with a foliage angle brush. I've got this one right here. It's a Creative Mark one. It works really, really well. I'm going to load it up with my pink. Let's do some pink ones first. And this magenta is fairly transparent, so it's not going to show up as well as other colors. Now I'm going to grab a little violet. It's okay if some of these these ones in the front have some more texture. And I'm also going to just kind of stab it into a little bit of white there. So as you come towards the bottom of the canvas, you want your um, flowers to be larger. I'm kind of loading a few colors up here. I 
And then I'm going to do some larger ones, kind of coming out from the bottom of the canvas here. And some blue and some purple. And we'll do some individual leaves after we get these in here, just on the front, um, the front ones only. Because you really wouldn't see it on the other ones. Now, of course, you can take as long as you want with this painting, but I'm trying to see how um, how I'll be able to break it down quickly in a class setting. But of course, you always take your time because it's fun, right? Okay, so if you need to add any more um, greens to it, you totally can do that. I'm just gonna grab a flat brush here. I'm going to grab my sap green that's still in my palette and I can go in and I can throw any in where I feel like I've got too much of the color or I just want a little bit of, of extra green. You can leave texture on here, meaning like you can leave thick um, swashes of paint if you want to. That's completely up to you. If you want to deepen up anything in the water, in the, uh, water area, you can do that as well. Um, Usually like maybe around where you have some land mass, that's where you'd see it a little bit darker. And when you have it closer to the horizon, it can add a little more depth to the piece. So these are just some quick and easy uh, tricks you can add if you are, um, you know, painting with somebody for the first time. It can help you um, pull a piece together and finish it a little bit more quickly. I'm going to let this dry and then we'll come back and add a final details. Okay, so the finishing for this quick painting, I did a little bit here just so I could have an example to show you. Um, it's very simple. So you want to start off with um, a light color, kind of like a, a light yellowish color. If you look here at this, at this reference photo, if you look at the tops of the lupins, they're kind of like the yellowy green color. You're not going to see it in the ones far away because they're just too far for your eyes to make out. But for the closer ones, you want to represent that because that's going to help you bring a little scale and have your work have a little bit of a finished look to it, even though it is a quick painting, like I mentioned. Um, so what I would do is find one of the flowers you want to highlight. Let's stay, say this one right here. And then we're gonna just paint that, that tip and we're just gonna do that that yellow green. And the other place you want a nice tall one like that, just go ahead and do the yellow green. Bring it high so you have some scale. And you can go ahead, I would do a bunch of those um, right off the bat while you have that color on your brush so you don't have to keep washing and washing away all that color. So you're just kind of like tapping on um, a little bit of a cone area. And then let's do one over here. And this is gonna help those, uh, those front ones have a little bit of dimension. And then you can go in with any of the colors that you've used so far, but then add some white. So if I take my brush, you can use any brush for this really. Um, maybe I'll grab a bigger one so it will hold a little bit more. And I'm gonna grab a round. So if this one was going to be, let's say this one here is gonna be pink. I would load up the pink, the magenta here, and I would grab some white on my brush. So I've got both colors. And then I would just kind of dab that in. I do need to get a little more pink. So I'm really gonna load that up well. So I did have to put some more on there. Just pick up a little bit of the pink so you can see that I've got two colors there. And I am just going to dab on those little bits. Now it's hard to see because I have some wet paint on there still. So you might need to clean your brush and reload. Um, or you could let your layers dry in between. But like I mentioned, I'm gonna have very short periods of time with the kids that come to this activity tonight. So I wanna make sure that this is something that could be finished in a short period of time. Now they can work on whatever they want, but um, I wanted to have one idea at least if they didn't have, um, 
if they didn't know what they wanted to work on. This one here is going to be a little easier because the paint underneath is fairly dry. And this is a very impressionistic look here. I'm going to switch it up to some purple. You could even do some purple, some pink, and some white. And just fill in. So the white is really what's going to make it stand out from the background, but you do need that color underneath or it's, you know, it's going to look weird that it's bright white, you know. And if you get into that green underneath, then you're going to need to, um, you're going to need to clean your brush off. Now, like I mentioned before, I am much more comfortable working with watercolor <laughs> or mixed media. So, um, uh, so this isn't going to be the best loop and tutorial in the world, but it will give you a place to start and a fun project, hopefully. I'm going to bring that up higher. I don't like where the, uh, where the flower cut off there. In fact, I think I'll make that one a little bit higher altogether. Let's make that one come up a little bit higher so we have a little scale there. I was feeling like they're a little too lined up. And then we'll go back in that green and add a nice green. Well, a little bit of green up there. So all those ones that we painted originally, they're just background. They're just, you know, there to give a little bit of, um, get a little sense of place. Now, something else you can do with that yellow-green color, um, you can add in little bits of stem. I think that's a little easier to do with an angle just because you can get a nice sharp uh, line in there and, and angle brushes um, like I can just kind of dab it in there and get a little bit of stem and it's sturdy enough that it will push the heavy acrylic paint around and I can just kind of stab in a little bit of stem wherever I want it now the other thing that you're probably want to gonna want to gonna add that you'll want to add will be some leaves, and I am using a mixture of um, the violet and the um, the gr sap green, and I'm just going in and s just throwing in some choppy, short, spiky shapes. You usually have a center stem, and then there's a bunch of different little spiky shapes that come off of that. Not everything is going to be real visible because We've got so much green here, but we can get some leaves in anyway. And then after you've got all the uh, all the dark in there, you can go in with a mix of the white and the green. You can put a little yellow on there, but if you have purple on your brush, just be careful because purple and yellow make mud. And you can throw in a few little highlights just to make them stand out a little bit. Just to give it a little bit of a... Um, just a little bit of contrast. So if you wanted a quick uh, first time painting or you want to paint with your kids and you wanted something easy, give this a try because um, it is definitely designed to be an easy beginner loop and tutorial. Um, I hope you enjoyed it and that's all I have for you today. I want to thank Jerry's Artorama for sponsoring this video. These are the Turner Acryl Gouache paints. They are an acrylic paint. They're not a, a traditional gouache, meaning that once they dry, they are permanent, um, but you do have that beautiful matte finish to them. You, of course, could varnish it if you prefer glossy, but I really enjoy these. Um, they're also really good for mixed media because you can go over them with um, like oil pastels or colored pencils, and the toothiness of this paint where it's a little rough, it's matte, it will grab the other media. So that's another reason I like it. You don't have to use this. Any acrylic, ah, any acrylic paint is fine. Um, actually, the Soho's not bad too. That's a uh, really inexpensive um, from Jerry's. So if you're looking for something as a starter set for kids, they have some very affordable sets there. But um, mainly paint with whatever you have and enjoy the tutorial. I hope you liked it. I hope it wasn't too basic and beginner for you. But um, there you have it. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.